many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy the cons of Tarkir holiday gift box? Touted as the perfect present for the planeswalker that has everything, just what do you get in this holiday gift box, and how perfect is it for the average player, as well as for new or experienced players? Let's take a look. The holiday gift box contains the following. Uh, stickers? Four packs of cons of Tarkir. One alternate art Sultai charm. And 20 basic land. Really? 20? Four of each land? 20. Yes, 20. Five card dividers. And a box. The box, in fact. The box seems to be the major item that you are getting in the gift box. The problem is that this is a poor quality box. Not as bad as the Theros holiday gift box, but far, far inferior to the Ravnica. And by the way, notice that this is one continuous shot. So I haven't had a chance to do anything to this box since opening it. See how the dividers are already warped out from the middle? They feel very thin and malleable. This is something Something highly likely to tear and tear soon, especially if you are frequently pulling cards in and out. Very thin, flimsy cardboard. It's just glued on at a few dollops on each side. Wow, look at how this corner is damaged right out of the box. This is not something I was able to do after playtesting. You saw me open this, and it comes out already frayed and damaged. What do you suppose this will look like in six months? There's another item out there at the exact same price, the Deck Builder's Toolkit. This also contains four packs of magic cards. It comes with a card storage box as well, but the Deck Builder's Toolkit box only holds about a third of what the Holiday Gift Box does. Still, I would maintain that the Toolkit holds quite a large amount of cards nonetheless, and I really like how the Deck Builder's Toolkit closes in such a protective manner. It folds inward so that it doesn't come open easily. You could drop the this on the floor and it would stay shut. Here's what the deck builders includes that the holiday gift box does not. 125 semi-randomized additional commons and uncommons. 100 basic land as opposed to just 20. And here's what the holiday gift box includes that the deck builders does not. One alternate art promo. The other major difference is that of the four packs within the deck builders, several of them are from sets that have already rotated out. This is certainly frustrating, especially when looking for a gift for new or casual players. And, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I become very unenthusiastic about either product. They're so limited as essentially selling you different forms of cardboard storage. I'm going to be honest with you, cheap plastic dividers and a sheet of stickers just isn't much of an advantage. Let me paint for you instead a different picture of what Wizards of the Coast could be doing with these sets. So the first thing I'd do is up the packs from four to six. Why? Because six packs is what is needed for a sealed constructed 40 card deck, which is what players build at League, pre-releases and launch events. Having that kind of uniformity so that a newer returning player who is easing into the game through buying a deck builders or a gift box from the very start will be learning what a sealed deck is. 
Instead of these stickers, why not include a beginner's guide that talks about what sealed is? There's six packs in this imaginary product of mine, and so talk about to that new player that you open up the packs and you build a 40-card deck of one, two, or I suppose in Tarkir's place, three colors. Talk to them about how they can do this with each of their friends and how this is what they'd be doing at their store's league. It's a nice way to plug what leagues are for new players. Pre-release, launch events. That is giving them a lot more than a sheet of stickers. Hey, look, the Kamigawa symbol. That's relevant. And how about putting a little more effort into flavor? Don't stick a Sultai charm in the gift box and Mardu art on the box. Make the box in five flavors, one for each clan. Make alternate art for a Teemer charm, a Sultai charm, a Mardu charm. Alternate art for a charm from each clan and then use that artwork on the storage box. Then what you've got is the Jeskai holiday box, the Mardu holiday box, the Sultai holiday box. This might even get get people to want to buy more than one for themselves. Make a quality box. So the first holiday gift box, the Ravnica gift box, overwhelmingly is considered to be of high quality by most players. And as someone who's seen it for himself, yes, it absolutely is. The Theros gift box of last year is considered incredibly poor quality. In fact, the Theros gift boxes are selling for less than the new Tarkir gift boxes. So where does this one lie? Somewhere in the middle. It's not as poor quality as the Theros box, but it is not anywhere near as high quality as the Ravnica box. Doing what you did with the Ravnica box should be the bare minimum, but I'd like to see a durable, high-quality box that also has a sturdy closure, along the same lines of the Deck Builder's Toolkit boxes. Boxes get dropped. They get flipped. I can get a box anywhere. Give me a box that has some concept of protecting what's inside. And these are really just minor changes, but you get so much more from them. If they happen to increase the price to $24.99, I don't know, even $29.99 for Wizards of the Coast, then it's worth it to be getting a much higher quality box, to be getting six packs of Cons of Tarkir or the current set instead of just four, to have an informational guide about building a sealed deck, playing against your friends, joining your store's league, what is pre-release and launch, etc., and having them in different flavors. So far, most of these sets recently have all been going with the idea of guilds or clans or just choosing a mono color, a god to devote to in Theros, whatever. Having a selection of flavors is going to get people very excited. So who is this for? It's not for advanced players. If you're an experienced player, you've likely got your own storage boxes and you don't need land. Spending $20 on four packs and an alternate art charm is not something that is worth it for you. For the average player, the most likely draw is the box. Maybe you have a growing collection that you've been storing in a shoe box or a fat pack box, and you like the idea of this large multiple road box. But for for the difference in price, you could get what the advanced players are likely using. Something like a BCW storage box to meet your specific needs. For the beginning player, this is maybe worth it, but more so as a gift than as something you'd buy for yourself. I'd point new players to the toolkit instead, except that, stunningly, at least for the current toolkit, not all the packs in the toolkit are in standard anymore, so I don't feel that I am going to recommend that instead. How about this? I can go on Amazon right now and have for $17.25 to $22.50 delivered to my door, or essentially for the exact same price, if not less than the holiday gift box, a complete working commander deck of moderate value. Maybe that isn't something designed for new players, but heck, at least someone can sit down and play a game of magic with it. Or how about something like the Fantasy Crate? It's $10 more, but it's giving that new player more. Again, if your only argument in favor of the gift box is 
the box. You can buy a professional BCW storage box that stores any amount of cards you need and is of much superior quality. So as soon as you eliminate the box as the reason for buying this, what are you left with? 20 lands? A sheet of stickers? I'll put a maybe worth it for new players here, but add that I feel only as a gift received is it worth it. In my opinion, this is four packs of magic cards for $20 plus tax. All levels of player can do better than this. I hope this video has been of some help for you. You can help me out by remembering to subscribe, like, share, or just by leaving a comment. And remember, whether buying a holiday gift box, a commander pre-constructed deck, a dual deck, or just some booster packs this holiday season, try and spend that money where you spend time playing magic. And that's not at Target or Walmart, it's at your local game store. You're supporting your magic community.